This is where the lyrics go. This is where the lyrics go. Hey, look, there is Brook up. In here. Hey, Red Bill. Oh, hey, everybody. Hey, look, it's the topic board. I realized again today that um, it's probably best if I do this standing up. Um, so, so we're going to do savings throws and then, um, no, not again. And then, um, and then I'm going to tell you about my morning, walk you through my morning. Merry, happy holidays, every, wait. Merry, happy holidays, everybody. That should be an overlay, Grim, not a, not a background. Uh, special thanks to the Shadow Cabal. Of production executives, especially today, and I gotta say, it appears we have lost Chad. Chad is, is uh, oh, dude. I know, Sylvia. I'm trying to get to that part. It, it there's a lot going on, Cat. Here, here, here. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I have to let the cat out. Um, I know. Just give me a second. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be part of it. Different things. Trades people will see different things from professionals. We'll see that different things from pastors and psychologists and truck drivers and uh, computer programmers and people who do tile. They'll all see different things. And and then, and, and so one of the things that I saw in Genesis 4 was the reiteration of of Genesis 3, where the consequence of murdering his brother was for, for Out. Turns out the internet is not good today. It's, um, I'll just say it like, I'll say it like this, okay? In the timelines where I haven't failed this much, I'm doing this out of a motel in Colorado, um, and the internet's a lot better. But, uh, let's see if I can get back on track. What happened? Well, saving throws, I said I would do. Saving throws, I said I would do. Well, um, here, let's let's give it a minute for everybody to realize we're back online, eh? Eh? And see if it lasts. Hmm. Real so real sorry about that, everybody. This is better than savings throws? What, you guys chatting? Yes, yes. It, I, don't, I don't know, there was there was a thing this morning. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Ah, well, yesterday, last night, I guess I guess before I tell you this morning story, I should have to date you on last night. Um Hey! Yeah, the cat's mad about mad about it. All right, everybody, let's do the saving shows for today's mic. I've dropped my wisdom again. I've dropped my wisdom again. Welcome to Evil Constraints. Nat twenty for the wisdom, folks. If you count the floor roll, and we do around here sometimes, uh, for everybody else. Uh, 
This is where we put the words. Everybody else, you can choose survival, social, wisdom again, or heart. <sighs> Survivalists, two. Socialists with a 12 and hard folks 18. Uh, but yeah, we're keeping the nat 20 for the wisdom folks. And a special shout out to Stubbs, who I've met privately after um, his appearance on the Monster Party. Is it Stumps? Yes, he stumps me. And. Mm. And in case you missed it, we've also been introduced to Sleeper, Shell, Sleeper Cell Shane on one of those other live streams. Uh, wisdom wins again. Okay, now, last night. Last night, she said. Okay, so the, the overarching story goes something like this. There's stuff in the Awakening from the Meaning Crisis series that the... That, Varegi said about the Lutherans that the Lutherans don't like. Some guy made the video. John responded. Jacob didn't like John's response and went off onto a live stream. I uh, went on to the live stream and did saving throws against Jacob's bullshit, but I guess Chad picked the wrong one. And after witnessing Jacob's cesspool of Sheol, live streams that he does he's decided that this whole thing is messy and he's better off serving in the serving god and life and stuff in the physical world i really hope he didn't delete any of his sh because that's good work we'll go through it you don't have to do anymore we can I, I really hope he didn't kill any of his stuff so um i talked to him this morning this, like last night i saw that the channel was down i left him a message this morning we talked about it a little bit, and um, frankly, this is mission work. If we end up not on YouTube for hours a day because you're of service in other ways, we're winning. Um, that being said, it's a big loss for the community. Um, he's, his work is masterful, frankly. And let's see. So that happened. I talked to him this morning, and then... And then... And then I do the whole, let's let's have a coffee and go on Twitter, shall we? And what happened was... Yeah? Sure. Sure. Um, so, uh, Paul does this one, and he says, Nearly everyone paid attention to the modernist Bible fight aspect of this tweet. Few paid attention to the funny, strange aspect of the weeness. We don't see straight or flat. And then Will of Cicero says, please say more about not seeing straight or flat. And I said, but he did already, masterfully. On, on, the, con on the video here that I have not yet given a commentary on. And so, as such, I essentially um, publicly said I'm going to make a commentary video on that. And so I was like, all right, before I do that, before I do that, I, I really want to go back through uh, my talk with John and do a proper commentary on this. So I went to work on that. All right. Um, I went to work on this. Here's, here's part of it. Here's part of it. Just to give me a break. That's an abstract argument as to right it doesn't take concretely what it, what it is right that's good i mean the one of the benefits of just being some rando on youtube is that i don't have to make proposals and arguments i can just <laughs> make beautiful <laughs> speculations and see how they play out like for example this uh this the critic self-organizing criticality and small word world networking you're speaking of happening in the brain yes um I see that as happening with uh, your friend Jordan and the, and the little corner. 
as far as like the the YouTube attention like w went up in this spiral and then now it just now we're trying to find synchrony again and yeah yep and, and yeah I, I and that's exactly the case and uh... now because you said that hey happy souls is high up as the ball uh where is your commentary on my ultra meta dick butt song? Um, leave it in my Christmas stocking. <laughs> I'm really hurt. I'm, and I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which hurt me more, like uh, Toronto Kurt not being my Valentine or Elon not stretching all the way down here, and being the giving me his Saturnalia podcast. Uh, I wonder if he's even going to do one this year. Maybe maybe his work at Twitter, he considers his Saturnalia work. So, uh, uh, anyway, this Tower of Babel, I'm trying to do a proper commentary on this video. So I go back into this part here. You have a sand, a column of sand falling, and it will form a mound. And the idea is, well, nobody does it. Nobody's going in and, like, there's no little gremlins or leprechauns. Well, what's happening? Well, you have a set of constraints. You have friction and gravity and, right, and spatial location and that, and, 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 and. Now, when I'm working, I'm up here on the computer doing, getting stuff ready, opening tabs and whatnot. And as I want to do, probably as I run this next clip, um, I also go and uh, service my addictions. And, and, and in this case, this morning, I was watching Homeroom, and, and this part played, or the part I'll come back at played. And they're way back towards... ...was for, for Cain to be cast out of God's presence. And it's directly parallel to Adam and Eve being... Um, kicked out of the garden and their way back towards the tree of the um, the tree of life being blocked. And so again, as I said before, you see this little step down with the iterations and it's a gradual slope down of of corruption and loss. Long way to go about things. you know unless your goal is to make things worse. like it, it's not like Cain has a limited number of things has nothing to object to. He's got plenty to object to. His situation actually is bad. He's overshadowed terribly by his brother, who everyone loves, who does extraordinarily well, and who's good at everything. And the story is a bit ambivalent. No, no. Now, now this, this reminded me of my um, character alignment, attitude, and orientation video. It, but I, I had previously named it just AAO because it, but I, I've recently today expanded, expanded the title to include alignment, attitude, and orientation. And then what you just saw reminded me of, of, of this part here. Oh, here. That takes me a while. Like, I guess it's the imaginal glue that holds our reality together. Um... She's the queen of a nation, and it's a really big deal. It's that that who she is matters, whereas at the profane level, it matters nothing. And like at the level you operate on this, your altitude on the sacred and profane axis, as you approach the world, is what deter what makes it attitude. That's what. Now why? Now why would I be go back to this? Well, that be, that was because that was because over on this, the most recent person to influence my hive mind thinking. Uh, uh, thank you, John. It was great. Um, was this person who said the only thing that would have made this video better was what about an analysis of the D and D alignment system? And I'm all, but lady, I already made that video. So that's how that got renamed this morning. And so I'm, I'm in here working, right? And he talks about these constraints, right? And then he talks about, wait, are we to this part yet? <clears throat> Again, you'll notice that there's embellishment going on here. And that's in terms of sort of taking the story and what you should do. Like it's, I think evil is easier to identify than good. 
I think good is trickier, but evil stands out to some degree, and then at least you can see. Chesterton makes almost exactly the same point. Chesterton makes the point that having someone identify evil and try and do the opposite is so much easier, and we're so able to point out evil, but good is, is really hard to, to sort of put your hands on. Now, um, so so that part was I went down to to do the thing, and I I saw that part, and then then I had what I'm claiming. What I'm claiming is the uh, uh, homeroom synchrony because I was watching homeroom, and 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 it all came together in my head, right? So so remember what he just said about evil, and then. Got to, he's going to have to modify it. I'll just leave it at that. I won't get into the details. The point is, so you have a sand, a column of sand falling, and it will form a mound. And the idea is, well, nobody does it. Nobody's going in and, like, there's no little gremlins or leprechauns. Well, what's happening? Well, you have a set of constraints. You have friction and gravity and, right, and spatial location. And that set of constraints, you have friction and gravity and, right, and spatial location. Okay. But here, what we have are the, the the constraints of time, attention, and evil. Be because we're trying to move away from it, like like they were saying in that 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 part there. And and when I mean we in here, it's this. is happening with uh, your friend Jordan and the, and the little corner as far as like the, the YouTube attention like w went up in this spiral and then now it just now we're trying to find synchrony again and yeah and, yep and yeah I, I... okay and so uh, and so one of the constraints is avoiding evil and since I did a shout out earlier to Toronto Kurt um, uh, I want to I want to bring in this part. Yeah. It seems like all of the states are being considered. So am I only conscious of a few, but unconscious? You're locked into terminal consciousness. You have a form of consciousness that is appropriate to life in the terminal domain. Okay, what I'm talking about, telic recursion occurs in the non-terminal domain. It involves a different form of consciousness. And in the conspans of manifold, it, 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 it's its own memory. It consists of layer upon layer upon layer of events that never disappear and never go away. They're right there. Nothing, you don't even have to reach into storage and pull this information out. It's right there. All right? And that's one of the advantages of having a manifold structured in the way that CTMU is structured. Everything is right there as it is needed. And, of course, telons are adaptive. Okay, telic recursion is adaptive. Whoops, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, see, one of my issues is I don't like to do single topic videos even when they're short. And so this is the Akashic Record and the evil, and that was the Akashic Record part. Sorry. When things happen that are not necessarily in accord with a certain telon, the telon adapts to the new set of resources at its disposal and comes together again, approaching the same final outcome. Does one have to be adaptive if one is, let's say, incoherent, which I heard you equate evil to? I didn't, I didn't equate evil to incoherence. I said evil is incoherent. Your face is very large for me right now. Okay, so, okay basically it's incoherent because evil is anti-existence. All right, basically it wants, it, it, it hates existence and it wants to go out of existence, right? But when you put, when you take a bunch of evil and, and, it won't recognize its own existence, and it won't recognize the existence of anything else. It's very hard to coordinate. It can't be coordinated, so it becomes incoherent. The only way that evil actually achieves any sort of uh, reality is it uses physical systems to do it. It nucleates physical systems and uses their structure, their power structures, their hierarchies, in order to be realized. 
So, um, that, I think, encompasses what I consider the, uh, the triggering event for the, uh, home room synchrony! Uh, but, as I'm going through this, this talk with me and John, it, it, it occurred to me, it occurred to me that, um, I'm still stuck on the same woo that I, that I was in 2012. And the woo uh, I mentioned when I was speaking with John is a, a series of 106 whatevers, and they just released, like, number 106 yesterday. And so um, for, for a taste of the woo that influenced me severely, it looks like this. We suggest the nature of all manifestation to be illusory and functional only in so far as the entity turns from shape and shadow to the one. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. It's a, and so there's that one. And what was the other? What's the other one? Oh, oh, yeah. The other part. Um, I don't know if you guys have caught it, but I guess if you have any questions about it, now would be a good time. Um, if you did catch it, it's this uh, beholder modeling fella. It's all mathematicians called the mathematics of the eye. Not, not only is, um, just quickly go over, not only is brain structure fractal, Russian doll-like, but also brain process is also completely fractal. So the process of the brain is also completely fractal. I'll I, I tell you why. Neurotransmitters compete to bind onto receptors and synapses compete on the stretch of dendrite to make links with a neuron. Neurons compete with one another for nerve growth factor. Ones that and my YouTube notification competes with the other ones you all have received. I thank you very much for your time and attention and um, special thanks to the Shadow Cabal without which I too, Chad, would have probably quit this nonsense quite some time ago. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm working on, the, on, the, on those uh, commentary series, big long pieces like I'm some smarty pants. Uh, in the meantime, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Goose, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart.